introduced to Falon and Selena. 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 That's a lovely name. Falon and Selena. The air reeks of urine, sweat, rancid fat. I'm on La Place de la Paix, Peace Park, in Port-au-Prince, the capital of Haiti. Thousands of people live cramped together here. It's dangerous for children. Violence and sexual abuse are part of everyday life. I want to find out if there's any hope of a better future for them. Alain Jean-Baptiste and his colleagues from the German aid organization Kinder Nordhilfe do all they can to help the children. Some 750,000 are living in camps. Children like Falon and Selena. They say they're always frightened. They can't sleep at night. Falon and Selena show us their home. Seven people live here in a shelter made of scrap, tarpaulins and cardboard. It won't survive the rains and the hurricane season which are soon to start. Already many people are ill. They sleep on the ground. It may take years before these people will have houses again. Selina's father, Emile Bernard, tells me he doesn't know how they'll get away or when. Only God can save us, he says. He'd leave today if he could. The next morning we set off early. We pass long queues. Food is distributed under the supervision of the UN. We're on our way to Leogun, the epicenter of the earthquake, 40 kilometers west of Port-au-Prince. The town used to have 220,000 inhabitants. Now, little is left standing. Together with Jürgen Schuberlin, the Kinder Nordhilfe project manager, I visit an aid project called the Child Friendly Space in Leogun. A local partner of Kinder Nordhilfe set up the center immediately after the earthquake. Most days, around 180 children come here. The organization already provides care for more than 7,400 young victims of the quake. Jürgen tells me that for children, the day of the earthquake was the day their house collapsed, the day people died, the day the school they attended disappeared. It was a day of loss, of terrible experiences, and for a while the children talked only about that. Now they're talking about other things, about living in tents, about the coming rains, about football, and they come here to sing. Singing, dancing, doing art and crafts, these are the best ways of processing the trauma. The children like physical contact. I'm often embraced. Jürgen asks 15-year-old Fabiola what she'd like to do in the future. I'd like to be a nurse, she says. When she's asked whether she and the other young people in the camp are still afraid because of the quake, she trembles as she says yes. She can't talk about what she went through. <laughs> Kinder Nordhilfe is supporting 13 child-friendly spaces in and around Port-au-Prince. They're structured safe places where children get care, teaching and food. In Quare Bouquet, the children are excited about seeing Vladimir Costin, a child psychologist who's worked for Kinder Nordhilfe for many years. He says what the little ones need most is love and attention. Mm -hmm. 
He explains that some children are full of fear. In others, the trauma is manifested in aggressive behavior towards other children. Some take up smoking, some withdraw and isolate themselves. The children need help to overcome the trauma, and they also need protection. From child traffickers, for instance. Even before the quake, trafficking and poverty were problems here in Haiti. Food prices have gone up a third. Children in camps are provided with meals. And they have a chance to learn. English, for example. This is Olvens. He's eight. He can't go to school. The building was destroyed. But he loves to dance. Alain Jean-Baptiste says that the children imitate everything he does. And that's how he's taught them to dance. Even before the quake, only 60% of children attended school. Now the eyes of the world are on Haiti. Perhaps because of the earthquake, these children will have better opportunities. Vladimir says the top priority is to improve living conditions for children. Then the battle begins to build a strong self-image for them as Haitians. He says we mustn't give up hope that Haiti can be a better place for these children and that they'll have a chance of becoming women and men who will take on responsibility for the country. This is my hope, he says. It's my task. That's why I carry on. It's hard to imagine how such change will come, especially here in Wharf Jérémy, the grimmest place in Port-au-Prince, a slum area on the waterfront. It's built on a rubbish heap. Many so-called Restavec children come from here, children who are sent to work for more affluent families, often treated as slaves, beaten and abused. Even the little ones are forced to do hard work. The situation is hopeless and the numbers are growing. Many of those orphaned in the quake have become Restavec children. They get no education, no protection, no love. Many places in Port-au-Prince make me despair. This pile of rubble was once a Catholic school. There were 200 children inside when the earthquake struck. 150 of them died. And this is just one of hundreds of schools that were destroyed. Kinder Nordhilfe wants to rebuild the school, working with the nuns who originally set it up. It will cost over 1 million euros. And thanks to the Chilean architects, it will be earthquake proof. Children from mountain villages round about will be able to come here. Jürgen says they want the children here to be able to start lessons again. That's the first step on the way to them learning a profession and being able to contribute to the reconstruction in their country. So there is a spark of hope. But when will the misery and suffering of the Haitian children end? At the moment, no answer is in sight. At least none I can find.